Hi, this is Iris Schreier, and today's project is the armadillo scarf. And I call it that because of the spikes that you could see in it. And I love the sculptural aspect. I uh, used a cashmere, it's called Cashmere Two Ply by Art Yarns, to make it. It's a two stranded cashmere, very, very, very soft. And I wanted to have something that uh, was super soft because it will drape appropriately for this pattern. So I highly recommend using something like a cashmere two-ply in order to get this effect. Um, one of the things that I did in this pattern was I created center increase triangles and then finalize them with center decrease triangles to create these spikes in the knitting. And I'm going to show you how I did that. But um, I wanted to show you as well another yarn option. When I um, demonstrate, I'm going to be demonstrating using um, silk and beaded silk and sequins. So I'm going to show you the yarns that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the Silk Pearl, and this is a highlights color called H9, which is a lovely khaki color. Um, any of our highlights colors would probably do. And I will alternate it with the Beaded Pearl and Sequins, which has these glass Murano beads as alternating with um, perfectly round sequins that look lovely in the knitting. And the two yarns together make up just about the same yardage as what I used for the cashmere two-ply in the scarf cowl that I made. So I'm going to do something very similar, but instead of just using one yarn as I did here, I'm going to alternate the plain silk with the beaded pearl and sequins um, in order to use the, the beaded yarn for the spiky sections and then the regular silk to set it off in the lace sections. So let me show you exactly how I do this. Okay, now I'm going to show you how a spike is worked. It's worked across a grouping of seven stitches and I have seven stitches on the needle all ready to make the spike. So follow along and refer to the written instructions as you follow along here. So um, I'm going to ask you to first knit the first three stitches of the seven. Then I'm going to tell you in the instructions to increase with the knitting into the front and the back. So you're actually pulling two loops out of one stitch. First into the front of it, then into the back of it. Let me just do that one more time. I'm going to knit into the front, knit into the back, I'm getting two loops out of one. Now, what I'm going to do is knit one after that, and then I turn. In other words, I make my right needle my left and my left needle my right. So I'm creating a short row. I'm turning midstream. And then I bring the yarn back in between the two needles. And now I go in the other direction. Now, the first stitch is going to be slipped. The second stitch is going to be increased. Now just so you know, I always increase into the first of the two stitch increase from the previous row. And if you turn your work around, you can see the stitch I increase into has that little, it's a half stitch, it's not rooted in anywhere, it's that additional stitch I created. So try to read your knitting and understand that that's always the stitch in which I increase. So I'm going to do an increase in that by knitting into the front and the back, pulling two stitches out of it. And this time I'm going to knit two. And now I'm going to turn my work again. Once again bringing my right needle to the left, my left needle to the right, bring the yarn in between the two needles to the back, 
I'm going to slip my first stitch. I'm going to knit one and then I'm going to increase in that little half stitch from the previous row and I'm going to knit one, two, and then a third. Okay, once again I'm going to turn my work, bring the yarn to the back, slip the first stitch, knit the second stitch, knit the third stitch, increase in that same little half stitch that was created from the increase on the previous row. And then I'm going to knit three. And the key is you knit until you reach that stitch where you turned around the other time, the previous row. But this time you're going to knit one past that, one past that gap. Because each time you're adding one on the edges too. And then you're going to turn. And then you're going to slip that first stitch. And then you're going to knit until you get to that little half stitch. And for those of you who need to, just count your stitches based on the instructions. And then I'm going to knit until I get to the end. And once I've finished my seventh stitch, my seventh stitch, I do something special to get that extra pointy spike. And I'm going to show you this row is a little bit different. I slip. I knit until I get to that little half stitch in the center and instead of doing a double, a, a, a knitting into the front and the back, I do, I knit into the front, I knit into the back, and then I knit into the front again. I'm taking three stitches out this time and then I knit to the end of that grouping. When I get to my gap, I'm going to knit one more. And that should get me to the point where I've completed all seven stitches. And once I've done that, I'm actually going to turn around and I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to do a center decrease triangle. And the way I do that is I'm going to slip the first stitch, knit to the point where I had done that triple decrease, triple increase in the middle, and I have three stitches. And I'm going to do a triple decrease. I'm going to take all three stitches and knit them together, just like that. Okay, it's a little tricky, but you get used to taking three stitches and knitting them together. And so that means that you decreased exactly what you increased on the previous row. I'm going to knit to the stitch before the last stitch. And each time now, I'm going to take one away from each side as well and turn and bring the yarn to the back, slip the first stitch. Now, in order to decrease again in the center, I'm going to see the stitch where I decreased in the previous row because it has a double wrap, in this case a triple because of the triple decrease. And I'm going to knit it together with the following stitch. So I knit two together just like that in the center. And then I knit until the stitch before this grouping, leaving one behind. I'm going to do that each time. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to slip the first, knit until I get to that decrease stitch, which is right here. You could feel it. It's kind of extra thick. I'm going to knit two together. And then once again, I'm going to knit until the stitch before the gap and leave that one behind and turn. Once again, I'm going to slip. Now, here is my double wrap stitch from the previous row. I'm going to decrease again using that and the stitch after it. And I'm going to knit two. At this point, I'm on my last row. And the way I end it is I slip the first stitch, I knit two together, I knit two together again, this is my final row, and then I just knit one and knit the last. And here I've just created my spike, and it matches perfectly with all my other spikes. And just double check to make sure that they're all lined up and perfectly ready to go. Um, the additional row I would add would be pure 
very easy because all you're doing is purling across with the beaded yarn. And this is especially beautiful with the beaded yarn with the sequins because it just makes the spikes really stand out. And so what I did is I alternated it with the regular silk purl, which I carry along the sides, and that's what I used for this very simple lace pattern that um, you can find in your instructions. So here is the overall effect. Thank you.